Hey, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Casual Thursday. <laughs> so, we were planning on doing our show tonight, and then on Monday, we were going to start doing shows without an audience. But basically, things are moving very fast. I don't need to tell you that. And our guests, uh, with great reason, uh, decided that they uh, didn't feel right coming in and doing the show tonight, so we decided to cancel it, and uh, we don't know uh, when uh, we are going to start doing shows again. But we had written a closer look last night, and the closer look is about everything that's happening right now. And really, the reason we're going to do this right now is that once it's on the cards, Wally makes us do it. So, here's the closer look that was written last night about the president's address to the nation. And, uh, yeah, go to the next one, Wally. Sorry, I jumped you. And the administration's failed response to the pandemic, and we thought we should go ahead and do it. So, uh, for more on this, it's time for a closer look. So, we're in this weird moment right now where it's difficult for the media and public health experts to convey the severity of what's happening without sounding hysterical. It's like being the one person in a horror movie who knows they're in a horror movie. Like, all the sexy teens are like, guys, I have an idea. Let's go skinny dipping in the pool during the full moon. And then there's a doctor in a lab coat standing there screaming, statistically speaking, this is werewolf time. <laughs> public health experts are warning us that we're failing badly, and those are the people we need to listen to. For example, one said today the lack of testing in the United States is a debacle, and another said this is an unmitigated disaster that the administration has brought upon the population. And on top of that, things just feel very surreal and weird right now. Case in point, if you tuned in a few minutes early to watch the president's address to the nation at 9 p.m. last night, and you chose to watch it on Fox, you would have caught the tail end of the masked singer in which case, this is what you would have seen moments before the president addressed a worried nation from the Oval Office. You get sprung! Yeah. Yeah, we're sprung. That is Sarah Palin singing Baby Got Back. That was so depressing, Sir Mix-a-Lot immediately wrote a sequel called Baby Got Prozac. Also, if we're encouraging people to avoid large crowds, I'm not sure it's the right message to promote a song by someone named Mix A Lot. If anything, you should, Cardi, be careful, and if you feel sick, stay home like an outcast. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, we also, I should let you know, have a full audience tonight. The weirdest thing about that clip was that the president immediately followed it up by giving his speech as the frog. <laughs> so that's what you saw if you tuned into the speech early. But if you watched it on C-SPAN and stayed until the end, you might have seen an equally weird moment when C-SPAN forgot to turn the feed off and we got to see a rare glimpse of the president after his speech was over. Now, during this speech, you could see just how hard Trump was straining to read the teleprompter and strike a somber tone. I mean, look at him. He looks like a long-haul trucker blasting the radio and slapping himself in the face to stay awake. If you walked in on your teenage son and his buddies in the basement and their eyes looked like that, you'd immediately say, all right, who brought the doobies? Because you'd be an older generation. <laughs> he should be surrounded by a cloud of pot smoke. So, Trump's face was frozen in this bizarre forced grimace in a desperate attempt to project strength amid his flailing response to the pandemic. But then, after the speech ended, C-SPAN forgot to cut the feed, and this happened. We're clear. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. He reacted to his speech the way the rest of us reacted to it. Okay. That was weird. It's like if FDR had said yesterday, December 7th, a day which will live in infamy, the United States was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. So, like, that just happened. <laughs> also, it's so weird to see a rare glimpse of Trump dropping the act of pretending to be a competent person. When he's trying to act like a president, he tightens his face and narrows his eyes. And then when he thinks the cameras are off, he's like a grandpa unbuckling his belt after a big meal. Okay. Oh, that sizzler buffet did not know what was coming. 
The relief on Trump's face was palpable, probably because he struggled, as usual, to squint his way through a prepared teleprompter speech without screwing up, and yet he repeatedly failed. Right off the bat, for example, he had trouble reading the word continuing, and in his usual style, tried to pretend his mistake was actually correct. I am confident that by counting and continuing to take these tough measures. I'm starting to think the president might be a maroon and a moron. <laughs> you can't start a sentence with the words, I am confident, if you're not even confident you can make it through the sentence without screwing up. Seriously, dude, just wear glasses. I know you don't want to look like an egghead, but don't worry, no one will think you are smart. This is one case where glasses won't fool anyone. No one's going to see you in glasses and think, whoa, who's that man of letters? <laughs> you should wear something age appropriate, like those old man glasses Jerry's dad wore in Seinfeld, or a pair of glasses with a chain around the neck like you're playing Mahjong. Although I'd never expect you to learn how to play Mahjong. I'm confused. Is that your Zhang or Mahjong? <laughs> now, look, if you're at home right now with someone and you high five them, because of how good that joke was. <laughs> Wash your hands. <laughs> so that did not inspire confidence, but worse than that was the fact that Trump said multiple things in his speech that turned out to be flat out wrong. And I'm not just talking about the usual stuff, like the fact that he lies nonstop. I mean, he got his own policies wrong, forcing the White House to issue several clarifications after the speech, walking back what Trump said. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. And these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things as we get approval. He said there will be exceptions. Um, he didn't spell them out, but he talked about people who are adequately screened will be accepted from that. And something about cargo. I'm not exactly, it wasn't clear. Within the past hour, the acting Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security posted a tweet saying the travel restrictions don't apply to American citizens or legal permanent residents or their families, which makes it difficult to exactly see how this will prevent the spread of the virus. Also, the White House issued a clarification saying the president misspoke and the ban does not apply to cargo either. My God, this is an address to the nation from the Oval Office, and they're backpedaling like a husband who accidentally called his wife's friend hot. No, honey, I, I think Janet's ugly. I, I just meant she has no air conditioning. <laughs> so Trump got the one big announcement from this speech about banning travel from Europe wrong. That was the biggest part. That would have been like Sarah Palin rapping, I like flat butts. Can you imagine Donald Trump trying to spit bars like that? I like big boats and big butts. <laughs> also, public health experts are telling us this idea of banning travel from Europe makes no sense. I mean, you do know the virus is already here, right? There were already over 1,200 cases in the U.S. as Trump was speaking, and that's with hardly anyone being tested. Do you not know that? Are you two weeks behind on your DVR? I can't wait to catch up on Bachelor. Peter's mom, Barb, seems like a real chill lady. <laughs> Look, man, you can't build a wall. Uh, I had somebody told me that it was a joke that made sense. <laughs> Look, man, you can't build a wall to keep out a virus unless you're willing to build 300 million walls around each and every American. Trump also called the pandemic a foreign virus in his speech. It's all part of a racist playbook Trump has picked up from the right-wing media. And it's no surprise since the speech was written by everybody's favorite horror movie lab assistant, Stephen Miller. <laughs> By the way, and apropos of nothing, he's one year younger than Katy Perry. <laughs> just a thing. That's just a reminder that racism is a terrible moisturizer. <laughs> anyway, Miller and his ilk and the conservative media have been doing everything they can to paint the virus as somehow foreign and specifically associating it with China. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. When it comes to this uh, problem that the country is facing with Chinese corona... They've been working on this Chinese coronavirus. The Chinese coronavirus. The Chinese coronavirus. The Chinese coronavirus. We call it a Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus. You called it the Wuhan virus. And I, I haven't... I, that, that's an accurate way to depict where it's coming from. We should probably call it the Wuhan 
virus so that they get full credit. The most encouraging thing is actually happening out of China, who started this whole thing. Their measures at containing it have actually worked. Even yeah, though so they started it and have yet to apologize. No, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Are you waiting on an apology from China? Is that going to make you feel better? Do you want them to send you a fudgy the whale that says sorry about the virus? Here's an easy tip to follow during this pandemic. Don't be racist. Also, don't be dumb. If we're going to start changing the names of every bad thing to reflect the country where it started, then we should probably rename the KFC Double Down the American Heart Attack Sandwich. <laughs> not only is this racist, but it's also not going to stop the virus from spreading here because that's already happening. What we're seeing right now is what experts call exponential growth. We saw it in Italy where the entire country is on lockdown right now, and experts say we're basically on the same trajectory as Italy, which is currently in the midst of a massive public health crisis and has resulted in them shutting down almost every store in the country. January 31st, Italy had two people known to be infected. Within a week, February 6th, that had risen to three people. Two weeks after that, they were up to 17 people. Three days later, by February 24th, 219 people. Four days later, February 28th, 821 cases. Just over a week later, March 6th, 3,916 cases. Four days later, as of yesterday, it's 10,149 cases. That's yesterday. Today, it's up 12,462 cases. In the U.S., four weeks ago, we had 15 cases. Just over a week ago, we had 100 cases. Today, we have over 1,200 cases. The U.S. is right now following almost the exact same trajectory just a week behind. Italy has locked down the entire country, um, halted all commercial activity. Just a, a quote here, Italy on Wednesday ramped up the severity of its national lockdown, ordering a halt to nearly all commercial activity aside from supermarkets and pharmacies. Damn, can you imagine every store in America being empty? If you can't, just picture any CVS at 4 p.m. Hello, does anybody work here? <laughs> Excuse me, you in the CVS coat. <laughs> but lest you think Italians aren't making the best of the situation, think again. In fact, they're offering us some valuable lessons on how to make it through the crisis and keep your spirits up at the same time. Here's video of a Roman man wearing a costume designed to keep people at least one meter away from him to prevent the spread of disease. <laughs> Amazing. He looks like he's playing Saturn in a school play. Forget Sarah Palin, that guy should be on The Masked Singer. Before I sing, I have a question. Uh, the lady with the glasses, she was going to be a vice president? <laughs> okay. <laughs> In fact, the outbreak has already had a major impact on virtually every aspect of society, from sports to travel to Hollywood. Movie stars are not immune from the coronavirus. Actor Tom Hanks has revealed that he now has the virus, along with his wife, Rita Wilson. The annual Coachella Music Festival in California has been postponed. In Washington, the National Cathedral will be closing for at least two weeks. California, Oregon, Washington State have now banned gatherings of more than 250 people. Here in the city of New York, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which sees millions of spectators every year, is canceled this year. United States Senator Maria Cantwell, who represents the state of Washington, a member of her staff, has tested positive for the coronavirus. The NBA announcing they are suspending their season until further notice upon the completion of tonight's games. Wow, the NBA is suspending all games indefinitely. That's insane. It is terrible news for NBA fans and every team except the Knicks. <laughs> the losing stops tonight. <laughs> now, we're obviously wishing the best to Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson, and anyone who comes in contact with or is vulnerable to this pandemic. But last night on MSNBC, President Obama's former Ebola czar, Ron Klain, said the Hanks story is especially revealing because they were actually in Australia when they were tested. If they had been here, Instead, thanks to the testing debacle we're experiencing in the U.S., they might not have been able to get tested at all. The president talked tough on travel, and in the meantime, we weren't getting ready on testing. We had warning that this was coming and the kind of numbers it's coming, and we're still sitting here having a conversation about testing. Tom Hanks got tested because he was in Australia. If Tom Hanks was in New York, it would be almost impossible for him to get tested. That's insane. Americans would have better odds of getting tested if they flew to Australia, just like they'd have better odds of being whisked away in a romantic adventure with a charismatic crocodile hunter in the outback. <laughs> this is what Trump should have been focused on in his speech, massively ramping up testing, surging the capacity of our healthcare system, and taking care of the millions of vulnerable Americans who are about to face personal and economic hardships because of this pandemic. Millions of people 
are without paid sick leave and health insurance and layoffs and workplace closures could leave working people struggling to make ends meet. We should be providing those people with immediate and direct help. Instead, as of this moment, the Trump administration is still moving forward with a truly sadistic plan to kick 700,000 people off food stamps right as a global pandemic tanks the world economy. The president has a plan to cut 700,000 people off of food stamps, low-income people. And they said, do you still plan to cut them off of food stamps on April 1st, when those are the very people who are going to be losing their jobs? And they say, yes, they do intend to cut off them off of food stamps. My God, now he's kicking people off food stamps. He's like a villain from a Charles Dickens novel. What's he going to do next? Take away Tiny Tim's crutches? I need those to stand up or I'll fall flat on my face. All jokes aside, he's a terrible person. Our government is massively failing. I said all jokes aside. <laughs> Our government is massively failing us at a time when the nation is looking for guidance, so now it's up to the media, public health officials, workplaces, and individuals to take this seriously, practice caution, and lead where the president is failing. And whenever Trump decides to lie or blurt out something dumb, we all just have to shrug it off and say, OK. This has been a closer look. So, like I said, everybody, we do not know uh, when we're going to be back. Uh, we would just ask all of you out there to please uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Uh, let's not try to panic, and let's try to be there for everybody. Uh, we love you all. Uh, thank you for watching.